The idea of this video is to give you a heads up on how to fly close formation. We start off, we're on the runway, we're going to run up to 75% on the fan, and then after I call ready, Boeing should go brakes off. Uh, we beat the gun a little bit here, not that it's too big a deal. As you can see at the start there, I actually have the main wheels lined up, that's where we should be. I've dropped back a little bit here, um, trying to catch up, but uh, don't sweat it. Alright, it's going to be close enough, it would still look good from the outside. And we're just trying to keep it together. Alright, and we're going to rotate basically at the same time, so I'm just watching him as he brings his nose wheel off, I'll do the same and we just fly formation throughout the maneuver. Once we are airborne, the gear comes up and eventually the flaps come up and I will move into the standard close formation position. Now obviously I haven't flown this type in real life, so uh, but judging by where the formation lights are, you can kind of get a pretty good idea of where you should be. I think that you line up the two front formation lights and square off the back line so it would be at about 90 degrees. So I'm maybe a little bit far out here. Funny thing with close formation is the closer you are, the easier it is because you can easily see the movement. Now, when you're flying close formation, try and keep it so you walk the throttle. We're going to go through a couple of turns now. The first one is going to be a turn towards, so as your leader turns towards you, you're going to have to drop down a little bit. As you drop down, you're on the inside of the circle, so I bring back the throttle slightly. When you move the throttle, try and walk them. So you move them one at a time and walk them back, walk them forward as required. So here we are, I'm just maintaining my position. So you can see that formation light is on top of the other formation light and kind of the flashing uh, wingtip light is kind of on your leader's head. And I may be a little bit back, but not bad. All right, and we just fly the formation around keeping that position. So I'm walking the throttles pretty much constantly, but it's not bad. The most important thing is as a lead is that you try and make as few throttle changes as possible. The smoother your lead is, the better your number two is going to look all the time. So we've rolled out now, and as we roll out, the power needs to come back out because we're not on the inside of the turn anymore, and we're getting ready to roll the other way. Now, as the leader rolls away from you, you need to pitch up somewhat, obviously, to stay on the line. And as you're staying on the line, the throttle needs to come up because you are on the outside of the turn. So as I pitch up a little bit here to hold the line, I'm having to put a little bit more power on because I'm on the outside of the turn, so we have a bit further to go. But as you can see, I'm trying to hold the position. All right, now it's going to get it perfect all the time unless you're in the red arrows or something, and even if then, if you watch those guys, they bounce around like crazy, but they bounce around over a very small area, all right? So, again, I'm holding, I should, because Boeing, who's our lead today, is holding a pretty constant throttle. Your throttle, once you get set to the position, there'll be tiny movements. In fact, if you have a warthog, you can leave one throttle where it was, on a steady, in a steady state position and just move the inner throttle is kind of standing. And as I say, try and walk the throttles around. Now, we're gonna enter a flat turn next as opposed to, so this time we're basically Boeing, you can only do this away as the lead. And as he rolls, we're basically gonna spot roll from our position and just keep looking at the underside. So you're aiming to basically keep his head and his cockpit on the horizon and hold that flat position. And as we go around, obviously you're just adjusting the throttle as before. But as I say, it's a spot roll going in and it'll be a spot roll coming out.
So as I say, as we roll out, we spot roll out, and then we're just trying to readjust my position. You can see I got a little bit slack here, and a little bit wide. Now, I'm just gonna go in now. Now, ew, this is what we did in real world. Um, go into a position where you would go if you were gonna go through some very thick cloud. We always go under rather than above because obviously you can't see through the bottom of your aircraft. So I'm gonna tuck in, I'm tucked in fairly close. So now, no matter how thick the cloud gets, obviously within limits, I should be able to hold the close formation. From that position, I'm now gonna move back into a line astern position. Just to have a quick look at line astern. Yeah, not a great view from here, obviously, as we have a big bit of the canopy bow in front of us. But for real, we step down a little bit because obviously we don't want his engines hitting us. And we know we're stepped down enough when you can no longer hit, feel the flutter on the back of the tail. Doesn't really apply to DCS because they don't model the uh, weight turbulence. Now, we're over on the left-hand side just to have a quick look at the left-hand position. And again, it's pretty much mirror of the other side so I'm just moving in now and we get the light onto his helmet just about and looking basically straight across the tails. Now we're going to have a look now at some rejoins and getting into close formation which we kind of cheated at the beginning because we were already in it from takeoff. So now we're going to drop back and we're just going to do a straight ahead formation rejoin. In this particular case, I'm only gonna get about uh, 25 minutes of overtake. And when you're going into close formation, in order to make it safe, what we're gonna do is what we call forward, up, and then in. So at this stage, uh, Boeing's just flying straight ahead for us, and we're closing up. Obviously, we're just using our velocity. And as the aircraft starts to bloom, so it'll suddenly get bigger, obviously you've got speed brake to use. And we use a procedure, as I say, forward, up and in. So the first thing I'm going to do is drive forward to the line. So I'm looking to get that wingtip light onto his cockpit. Once I have the wingtip light on his cockpit, then I'm going to gradually move up to get so that I'm looking at the correct level. And then we're going to gently slide in down the line to get into our formation position so as I say forward up and then now we're going in position the aircraft uh, for a turning rejoin so Boeing is in about a 30 degree bank turn and this is an easy way to get your wingman back in quickly so I'm placing him, unfortunately he's kind of behind the canopy bow right now, but what we used to say was we were always taught two beer cans above the horizon, beer cans are on their side in this case, all right, and just running in. So I'm running in actually, trying to run in level on the inside of the turn and using the fact that geometry puts me on the inside of the circle, so I'm effectively faster than he is, geometry wise. So I'm gradually closing up, and very similar to the straight ahead rejoin, I will try and keep my displacement down until uh, later on as we're getting closer and then I should gradually move forward and up and then we'll slide in on the line into our close formation position. And that is how you do a turning rejoin. Normally the quickest way and the most fuel efficient way to get your wingman back because he can use geometry on the inside of the turn to catch up rather than having to burn a load of fuel to uh, go faster. Now, we're going to have a look now. At what happens if I'm going too fast when I'm doing a turning rejoin? It's quite easy. All I'm going to do, as you see here, is I flow through to the other side. By moving to the outside of the turn, although I was going faster than him, I'm now on the outside of the turn, so geometry means that it's not a problem. And then I can safely slide back to the inside of the turn to then rejoin into our close formation position. 
so as I say you had the two beard cans you just slide to the outside of the turn and then slide back to the inside of the turn and then do your forward up and in to get back into our close formation position. Okay, so now we're going back to the airfield. So there's a couple of things to know when you're leading a formation. So basically as a rough guideline, normally if you're in a descent, then you need 80% on, on the thrust and the speed brakes out. That leaves the wingman, the 80% to idle range to still be able to slow down and maintain formation. If you go to idle, then he has no way of slowing down and he has no chance of staying in close formation. So it's pretty common, 80% speed breaks out is your descent mode. Obviously we call for our gear and then we're gonna continue on the approach. And for the leader, it's important just to fly a constant kind of power setting or as constant as you can. So you keep the 80% until you get down towards the final. So here we are going into land. Now as the wingman, as we get towards the ground, I'm trying to step up, so I put my leader's head on the horizon, or as close to it as I can, and try and hold that position. The idea is that we're going to fly formation. We can actually do it all the way to the ground, which is the American way, or the UK way is to just kind of hold the, roughly the right position and make your own landing. Uh, today I'm doing the American way, so I'm going to actually follow blowing through the whole sequence so you'll see there's the odd glance ahead just to make sure I've got my side of the runway I'm trying to keep it stacked high so that we touch down at about the same time and as we touch down one thing for a lead is try to not go to idle until you have touched down because your wingman still using the thrust to stay in formation and then as you can see here I put my brakes on first then Boeing puts his brakes on and we'll roll out to the end of the runway for our final landing. So the only thing really of note, of difference for your formation is approach, is as you're getting towards the final section, step up, make sure you're looking down, put the leader's head on the horizon so you land at about the same time. Uh, the rest of this video is just a little bit of uh, F15, stuff if you want to have a look at it it's an f-15 takeoff uh having a look at the f-15 turns and flat turn and hey, techniques are all exactly the same slightly different positions obviously so here is the f-15 but i'm not going to worry about doing any more uh commentary apart from the fact that for the takeoff uh, when you've got an aircraft with burners if it's got nozzles like the f-15 does and you can see them then you can set about 50 percent nozzle on your burners and that will give your uh, number two the rest of the nozzle either side in order to maintain formation. Uh, in real life nozzles, don't, uh, the burners don't always light at the same time or in the same sequence so that can give you a little bit of hard time you know right at the beginning but other than that it's still fairly easy as long as your lead never does a mill power takeoff, don't take off in full mill because your wingman can't go in and out of burner that's a disaster. Uh, so you're either going to have to take off at about 98% or 97% and or in the afterburner range and use about 40 to 50% nozzle. And in the rest of this sequence you'll just see a bit of flying around, looking at the formation position for the F-15, a couple of flat turns and a pair's approach. Anyway, I hope you found the... Uh, the uh, video useful if you uh, have any questions then feel free to ping me all right cheers guys bye